Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for our Click and End Printing webinar. My name is Carly Morian. I am a representative for Click in the Northeast region, and I am joined today by um, two of my associates here at Click, Eric Brackey and Awesome Lalani, uh, both of whom are, are uh, solutions architects here at Click. So, just to go over a little bit of an agenda for us today. So we're going to start with an introduction to end printing and how it relates to Click, uh, followed by um, some capabilities uh, that Awesome is going to present for us, then a product demo, which Eric will present. Then I will go over the licensing of the product, and then um, we will end with questions uh, with Eric Brackey. So let's get started with a little bit of background. So Click, most of you are familiar with us. We are the proven global market leader with um, over 33,000 customers in over 105 countries. Um, we have ClickView and ClickSense as our software platforms. We have an extensive partner network with over 1,700 partners and an active community leveraging the expertise of more than 100,000 members, like our community website, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. So at the end of last year, end of 2014, um, Click acquired Vizubi. Vizubi is a company that up until this point, since they were founded in 2010, has produced end printing, which is a leading reporting product for ClickView. They have offices in Italy and also in Cambridge, Massachusetts, with over 1,000 customers and a network of 200-plus partners. So up until this year, when we had a customer looking at and printing as a reporting product for ClickView, it would go through those partners. Now it's something that would go directly through us over here at Click. So I'm going to pass it over to Awesome, who is going to uh, go into the product capabilities of end printing for us. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you, Carly. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are, from rainy, cold Philadelphia. Uh, thank you again for joining us. And without further ado, uh, I'm going to go over some product uh, capabilities. Uh, click view and printing. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it's a market-leading report generation, distribution, and scheduling applications for ClickView. It allows organizations such as yourselves to create great-looking reports quickly in a variety of popular formats, including Microsoft Office, HTML, and Pixel Perfect PDFs, using both data and analytics from your existing ClickView documents and applications. The flexible uh, ClickView imprinting framework of, uh, ensures that reports get to the right people, how and when they need it. Reports can either be centrally scheduled, generated, and delivered to a variety of recipients, or can be requested directly from ClickView apps in an on-demand fashion. With ClickView, ClickView and printing, ClickView can serve as a single system for both interactive analytics and now also provide a robust reporting platform, allowing organizations to retire redundant legacy BI and reporting systems and save significant costs in the process. Next slide, please. So end printing provides two major features, and first one being report creation capabilities. Reports can be created in a number of formats, like I mentioned. Uh, these include Office documents such as PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. Uh, we can also do pixel perfect reports with customized branding and advanced formatting uh, with Click view uh, and printing PDF creator, uh, HTML reports, and other formats can also be created. One of the very unique features of end printing is its ability to link and produce reports from multiple Click view applications. This allows the reporting platform to further break down silos and produce reports that are linked across multiple Click view applications. This is very cool. Uh, so, so. Again, additional distribution ones, and I just flagged Eric to go to the next slide when I wasn't ready. So Eric, if you can go back one, please. So uh, thank you. So uh, in addition to creation capabilities, uh, end printing can also provide you uh, distribution capabilities. So the, the tool provides you uh, ability to schedule, manage, uh, and securely distribute reports to a variety of users through multiple channels. 
This, again, can be via emails, sent to specific shared folders, or even delivered right to a network printer, so very flexible. Users can also produce reports on demand directly from ClickView apps based on current selections and views within an application. Uh, also, the tool provides advanced cycling and filtering. This ensures the right data gets to the right users on a desired schedule. And of course, everything is encrypted. That means reports are delivered securely. With that, I will hand over to my colleague, Eric Bracke, to go over some familiar use cases to help identify some business challenges that can be alleviated with click through and printing, as well as go over a brief product demo. Over to you, Eric. Thank you, awesome. Uh, so everybody on the line, you did come in muted, and I'll ask that we uh, stay muted throughout this presentation. However, uh, we are definitely going to save time at the end to answer questions that come up. And um, you should have access to the chat window. Feel free to type in any and all questions that you have throughout this entire presentation. And like I said, at the end of it, we'll take some time to answer some of those. And if we don't cover them, uh, please do follow up with your individual sales account executive, and they'd be happy to get Awesome or myself back on the line and continue the conversation. So what I thought we would do before I jump into the actual product uh, uh, presentation or demonstration is outline a couple scenarios. We see a lot of very common scenarios that crop up, and uh, it's a perfect use case for, for a a reporting type of platform like end printing. Um, but there's also a lot of common challenges with existing reporting tools that are out there. And uh, end printing, I think, is very unique when it's combined with ClickView uh, to help uh, with those. So I'm actually going to outline two different scenarios that uh, I kind of just came up with awesome. Um, and we just kind of uh, outlined uh, what these scenarios might look like, what they might feel like the types of challenges that you have and how you would accomplish that using this, this tool set. So the, posing a question, how do you deliver immediate insights to executives that are constantly on the go? Um, executives are very busy people and don't always have time to derive insights from a data discovery or even self-service visualization type of tool set like ClickView or ClickSense. How can you then ensure to distribute the appropriate information personalized for each person in a desired time and format throughout your entire enterprise. So getting the right information to the right people, depending on a role or person, individuals tend to require very different sets of data. Whether you need a 50,000 foot view or all the way down to transactional details, you can actually create reports once and limit data uh, for each individual throughout specialized reporting, filters, etc. Uh, not only does each individual then require personalized information, some users should and should not receive specific information. So managed centrally, you can actually determine who in your pool of, uh, we call them recipients, will actually receive what content. Uh, in this scenario that I'm posing, our executive only desires their sales summary report uh, once a month. And maybe they want a breakdown of each office and their corresponding performance. Uh, through this centrally managed distribution model, all reports can be delivered to multiple individuals on multiple different schedules based conditionally on an event occurring, uh, on demand. Uh, each individual may depend on uh, different needs uh, in your organization. Uh, and then executives tend to desire very specific formats, something that's typically easily redistributed and consumed on the go. Uh, so we decided to send an email uh, with an at-a-glance summary plus attachments like a PDF that would allow that executive to look at additional breakdowns by potentially by office performance. Uh, and then throughout a simple drag and drop interface, we can actually integrate with, as often mentioned, uh, multiple different formats, the office suite, very common, PDFs, images, web formats, and many others uh, that can then be delivered via email, file storage, web, et cetera. Uh, let me outline a, a second scenario before we actually go and show you what each of these might look like uh, that I think is a common set of analysis, uh, but slightly different in a few different ways. So as you disseminate Im information throughout all levels of an organization, the detail and view of that data may vary. Most likely, your analysts, developers, and others in the organization have already put a lot of hard work into providing business intelligence um, using Click data discovery and analysis tools. 
how then can you effectively share that information so it proliferates throughout your enterprise? Some common concerns or challenges exist in uh, re existing reporting tools that um, you need to understand not only uh, what they are, but how to effectively and efficiently combat them. Uh, one problem is uh, having uh, multiple versions and, and many different views. Well, we want one version. Reporting tools traditionally require similar types of analysis uh, and data to be dispersed, but tend to require multiple versions to be created and maintained to help show that. In this scenario, we are sending out data to multiple, um, we'll call it managers, that sort of report to uh, the executives potentially, uh, within the same organization as that executive in scenario one. Um, shouldn't we want to reuse then that same data set uh, created and, and create one sort of manager report that can be distributed and personalized uh, uh, for each of those individuals and their specific desired format? Uh, the other major challenge with reporting solutions is that uh, recipients of that information may not find the information relevant to them at that point in time. In this scenario, we actually send summary level information in the email, similar to the executive, but we also attach a detailed report and a PowerPoint uh, presentation so that it can then be shared or presented to other individuals. Between all of these different views that are uh, encompassed in this scenario, what happens if one or many of those multiple managers that we distribute it to um, then have additional questions? What are they expected to do with that? How do they uh, answer those questions? Do they have to go back and uh, change the reports for this one-off scenario? Or even worse, request a developer to do it for them. We all know that takes time. Uh, and resources, or do they have access to then develop it themselves? That's a lot of work and, and potentially know-how that they uh, don't necessarily have time to learn. Uh, given a one-off question in this scenario, we actually want to link directly back to the source to let that individual go and find it themselves. Now that we've distributed the content in multiple formats and provided several different views, uh, our end users can view that information, share and collaborate with others, go back to the source to interact and discover additional insights, and then finally react through either sharing or making decisions. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview what these uh, two scenarios would look like. Okay, so um, I'm going to start off with actually sort of the finished product. And so um, I'll jump into end printing in just a second. But what I want to look at is first off the executive view. So let me pull that up. This is an email um, that I had actually scheduled to run, uh, let's say once a month. Maybe executives want it monthly, um, and this is the information that they are being provided. It actually sent me an email today, just this morning. Um, it introduces, uh, I am apparently Elvis Presley, so, uh, so that's um, personalized for me. And here's my sales summary. Now again, this is just uh, embedded. This is actually my email. I pulled up the actual email. And it includes some basic metrics like uh, a sales, uh, quantity sold, margin percent, discount, et cetera, and then different views into that, like a, a bar chart, uh, trend lines through uh, a line chart. Um, and, and so this kind of provides me that at least initial view. And you could include some uh, highlighting to point out our discounts are higher than normal, our margin is down, up, something like that. Um, and obviously this is just a, an email template. You can include whatever you want, like links or uh, additional uh, images and formatting so that it follows sort of your uh, company standard, if you will, or branding. But in addition to that, as I mentioned, this executive may want a detailed breakdown. So I've actually attached a PDF report. And if I open that up, you see it's a, a similar view to what I have in my email. Uh, but now I have multiple sheets. You see I have six different sheets in here. And so here's a breakdown per office. Same view. I wanted the exact same view, uh, but I want to look at it per office. So as I go through each of these, I can see how the numbers vary in each of the offices. And again, you could conditionally highlight and say, office number two is struggling. Uh, their margin is down below 20%, or even worse, I think we have just under 19%, around 18.8 uh, in sales office number five. So uh, margin is a very important uh, part of sales. Or maybe you just look at the total sales, right? So now I've got the breakdown. Um, and this is very easily distributed. Right? If I want to go ahead and forward this information, uh, I can go and forward it to other individuals, share it with another executive, share it with the uh, managers on my team and say, hey, your branch is, uh, is not doing so well. What's, what's going on? 
Okay, so this is that scenario one, and this is all personalized, as I said, to, to this individual, my uh, Elvis Presley user. And we'll kind of show what that looks like and how you get to that point. Now, I've also got uh, this second scenario, and now this is all based on sales information, by the way. Um, but I've got more individuals to share similar sales information with, uh, like my managers. So now if I go and open up one of my managers, uh, Life Shine uh, is my, my one manager. Uh, and in fact, I have a similar uh, sales summary. Um, I changed some of the metrics here. I looked at the total number of orders, the products that they're selling, total quantity that they're selling, um, but I also I provided some of their direct reports. I've got individuals part of this team, um, and I wanted to look at their uh, total sales. And we can include some breakdown information um, and a couple other things here then to uh, discover more. So. As, with the, as I did with the executive, we actually have uh, multiple different attachments. So you can see I've got different file formats here. One of them is an Excel file, um, and the other one is a PDF. So if I go and open up both of those, here's actually the, the PDF, so, or excuse me, the uh, PowerPoint. So you may want to go and bring this to uh, some presentation. Maybe you have a, a quarterly review, weekly review. Let me look at our numbers. Where are we at? Uh, what's remaining? So you can step through each of these slides. So um, I wanted to look at a summary of the sales. And for this particular manager, they are actually uh, in two different offices, office two and office number three. And so for this manager in each of these offices, I also wanted to provide a breakdown of uh, total sales uh, for them. Uh, so you can kind of see what that breakdown looks like. And as I mentioned, we've got multiple different formats. Let's just say you need to go all the way down to a detailed view. Here again, we have a breakdown uh, summary information, but now I also go into each of their direct reports. Well, what are they selling? What product categories? And let me look at the details of all of those transactions. Um, so mon multiple different views, uh, depending on what kind of information you're look for, looking for, uh, it's personalized for this manager, all of the reports, the direct reports that they have, um, and many different breakdowns uh, for them to analyze. And then the last part of that, as I had mentioned, is what if there's additional questions that um, they haven't answered yet? Um, they may want to go back to the source document uh, and actually open that up. Well, here it is. Um, so with those insights, you see I've got multiple different components that I've kind of included in all of these different views, uh, but maybe now you need to go and look at, uh, at the actual document and, uh, and continue on. So maybe I just want to look at one specific year. Uh, of analysis. And I want to go look at the order details, uh, and maybe I'm looking at a specific category, right? So I have additional questions. How do I go and find that information? Here's my document. You can see all of the different components that I included in all of these different presentations. It's coming from the exact same source, but it's personalized for every person or, or individual based on role, uh, based on the, the team members that they have, uh, and the breakdown of the, the view that they need to see. Okay, so those are the two views. Um, and again, I've got, um, this can be customized to your heart's content, right, depending on what your needs are. Let's actually go and take a look at uh, how I put some of this together. So again, if I look at, this is kind of my starting point. Um, I've developed a, a ClickView application that most likely we've got people in here, they're already doing their analysis, um, and, and they've got all of this information at their fingertips. Um, but the additional scenarios where you need to distribute it to people on the go, they need a specific report or something that they can share easily with other people in a specific format, um, all of those things are pulled from this source. This is kind of like your source repository or, or uh, data set that you are working with. Um, and you can um, uh, pull all of these different components together. So what does that look like? We're going to go into end printing. Uh, and so when you build this environment, uh, you're obviously going to have sources, uh, one to many different sources. So this is going to be, in my case, I'm using a specific um, click view application. Um, I just labeled it and printing. It's my demo app. Uh, and I actually have a second one in here. Now, the interesting thing is you can start to tie these together. So what if you need an executive report that includes your sales application, finance application, uh, maybe something from your supply chain or inventory? All of these different components can be pulled together and linked uh, into one all-encompassing view for, for your executives. So that's what your sources are. 
recipients, uh, I think pretty obvious you're actually going to be pulling in uh, multiple different people that you send it to, and most likely if you have Click installed and, and configured, you've already got uh, some information around security, right? Who, who's authenticated, um, and so all of those security uh, items that you've set up are going to be very much related to this list of recipients, and then you can have additional controls here, um, like applying filters to them. So this is a couple of my managers, which employees report to them, so that when I distribute the reports, uh, it will automatically tie to those, uh, those people. Uh, and then we also have uh, tasks. Um, and I kind of broke it up into my two scenarios. I want a task that is specific to my executive, specific to my manager, and then you can schedule them. Um, have a specific, you know, monthly, every, we're going to call this every week. Uh, we're going to do on Monday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And then we've also got my executive report, which is every month, uh, first Monday of every month, uh, 8 a.m. Right, there's a lot, of, a lot of flexibility here. And as I mentioned, you can schedule this based on some kind of event uh, being triggered or um, times, uh, et cetera. So many different ways to handle that. Now the, the fun part here is uh, I'm gonna actually going to go back into tasks. Um, so if I look at one of these, let's look at the manager report. Uh, again, a lot of flexibility here. You can output it into a folder. You can include uh, compression, zipping up these files. You can include security like a password. Um, you can actually send it to a physical printer. Um, and you can also include uh, an email message like I did. So here you can include uh, subject line, who's it going to, do I need to copy people automatically for it, what does that content look like. Um, so I actually created what we call a, an HTML report, which is the pretty email format. So if you have company templates that you utilize, a lot of companies have a, a template or standard branded template that you send out in emails, that's what I did here. I wanted my standard template. Um, and you can then insert uh, content within it. And then as well, I attached one or many different files or reports to it. And this could actually be your ClickView application. I just wanted to um, disseminate that into specific uh, sets of data, like my Excel uh, detail information or my presentation. So all of these things come together. Um, so this is what your uh, task looks like. How do I distribute this content? Let's go and look at what it takes to create some of it. So if I go and look at my reports, um, I'm actually going to create one from scratch today. So again, many different formats that you can utilize. Uh, very simple one is going to be an Excel report. We're going to show you that. And when you uh, create it or, or um, uh, when it actually runs to generate this report, you can specify what type of file format you want. So we're going to look at that as well. So I'm just going to start by creating an Excel report. Uh, let's call this my uh, demo report. And again, please, uh, as, you, as we go through this, um, I saw one question pop in. Please uh, continue to add those uh, as we go through. And uh, towards the end, we'll try to address uh, as many of them as we can. OK, so I've got my demo uh, template. I'm actually going to create uh, a new one now. And so uh, the cool thing here is you've probably got a lot of users that are very familiar with Microsoft Office, that entire suite. So somebody that knows Excel very well or PowerPoint and has a standard, again, company template, you can import those, use them. You've got all the same tool sets that you're familiar with uh, to build out these reports. So very simple to use. Uh, so I need to import content from some source. So I'm actually going to go and add objects. Uh, this is really cool what it does. It's actually going to go out to my uh, application. I created a very simple application uh, that we pull in this content from. So this is my sales application essentially. And you can see that I've got a couple KPIs. These are sort of like these text boxes that you see at the top. Um, and then we've got certain graphs and charts. And so I kind of labeled them all that way here. So I've got a bar chart, line chart, uh, et cetera. So I can incorporate all of these different components. So I think what I want to do is um, I'm probably going to go ahead and pull in, uh, uh, let's see. My screen just disappeared on me, so bear with me. Okay, well, while I'm figuring this out, I'll just kind of explain what I'm going to start with. Uh, what I want to pull in, here we go, is a few different items. What this actually does is um, identify an object within your ClickView application, 
And uh, with that object, it will, as it generates the report, create sort of an image of that or snapshot of that um, set of information. So if we're filtering by a specific employee, um, it will actually uh, filter in the ClickView application, uh, generate that view with that employee, and return it as an image, and then insert it into any kind of uh, format that you want. So I'm going to pull in a few of them, like uh, I'll pull in uh, average discount, order size, margin, Let's look at, uh, why in the heck not, we'll pull in some detailed information, total sold, let's look at um, total sales, a trend line, uh, and then maybe a pie chart as well. So I'm actually going to pull in all of these pieces of information from my application. And so I'm going to hit OK. Uh, OK, and so I want to get rid of this guy. There we go, back to my template. Okay, so these are the objects that I had pulled in. Uh, and with all of these, now I can simply drag and drop them onto the screen, wherever I want. So let's just start with something very simple, uh, like let's just do total sales. And I'm going to add a label for that as well. Total sales. This is about as simple as I can get it. So I'm going to hit preview. And it's actually going to go and generate that report for me. Um, so you can see it's very simple to get started. I've identified the ClickView application that has the data. I've identified some fields or objects that I want to pull in, drop it onto the screen, add a label to it, and so here's my report. This is pretty basic. I'm going to keep going because I want to uh, pretty it up a bit and add a little bit more data, but this is essentially what that uh, looks like. And you'll notice that I can generate this in multiple different formats already. So if I want a PDF, um, I could certainly generate into that uh, that format. Okay, so. Uh, let's go add a few more. Let's do uh, like this. I'm going to add in total sales. Let's add in total orders. Let's also add in average order. Let's do our amount. So I'm, you can see I'm just adding in all of these KPIs here, and I'm going to line them up across the top of the screen here because I want to see all of them. Average discount, and that's going to be a, a dollar. We've also got our... Uh, margin as well. Oops, and I wanted it up there. Perfect. So now I can drag all of these guys on the screen. So total orders. Let's look at uh, uh, which one is it here? Average discount goes here. Uh, average order size goes here. Margin goes there. Not the detail table. Total sales. Oh, I don't have total orders. That's actually quantity sold. You know what? I'm missing it. Let's go add it. So here, total orders KPI. That's the one I wanted. There we go. Beautiful. Um, and then, again, the common formatting that you're used to. So I'm going to add in some colors here. I'm going to change the, uh, the text, increase the size. I'm actually going to insert some information here. Like, I'm going to call this my sales summary. Right, you can kind of play around with this as, as much as you want and include formatting here. This is, uh, again, very commonly known. I think everybody kind of understands how Excel works. Um, now I'm going to also add in, let's call this my product uh, category sales. Category sales. And this is going to be one of my charts. Total sales by category. There we go. And here, I'm going to add in my sales trend as well. And so, total sales trend line. There we go. Beautiful. Let's go and I should save my progress so I don't lose track of that. Uh, demo report template, that's fine with me. And let's preview it again. Okay. It's looking better already. So here we've got multiple different KPIs. Looks like the formatting is a little bit off. I can't really see it. There we go. Uh, I've got my header. I've got a couple different charts in there. Uh, looking pretty good so far. Awesome. So now uh, what you notice in some of these others is, well, how do you then uh, incorporate a, a breakdown? Maybe you want to go by office location or by, by year. How do we uh, incorporate that? Because I, I need to regenerate this, essentially this value, uh, given some kind of other criteria or filter. So I'm not going to save that, but I'm going to go back here uh, and continue on. So here I might rename this my sales summary. 
And here again, you can start utilizing, I think, pretty commonly known um, capabilities within this tool set. So I'm actually going to copy this sheet. I'm going to have it relatively similar. Um, and I'm going to have multiple, we call it pages, multiple pages. You can actually create multiple levels within the same thing. Like if I wanted uh, this listed in this one sheet uh, as each office, you could certainly do that. I'd rather have separate tabs or pages. Um, so on sheet number two, I'm going to add a page. And this one, why, yeah, why don't we do office? So I'll do it by office location. Uh, so you'll notice that it automatically changed it down here. Um, it's now going to be by office. And I'm going to add a label in here. You'll see what this represents in, a, in just a second. But it's basically going to generate a separate label or tab for each uh, office. Uh, and the other thing I want to do is uh, re relabel this so we understand which page we're on. And you can actually utilize this is sort of your page. This is the element uh, that represents that value. So I'm actually going to utilize that here. And so we'll call this uh, maybe like our sales uh, summary. Uh, for office, there we go, uh, and I'm going to save this and preview again. And so it's kind of generating, you, you kind of notice my mouse flickering a bit. It's actually going through all these combinations and gener generating all of these pages for you. Cool, so now we've got still that sales summary that we saw before, but now you'll notice all of these metrics, these charts, graphs, they all update for each one of my offices. And so if you recall, uh, in my initial analysis, I saw that 18.8% office number 5 and I think it was office 2 are both below 20% margin. Maybe we need to focus on these. Uh, what if we want to go and look at now the detailed information? So as I mentioned, you can look at a very high level, uh, but you can also go all the way down to detailed uh, information in here. So how do we incorporate that? You notice I pulled in that order details table. Maybe we want a third tab in here that is my order details. There we go. And I should probably copy some of this pretty formatting that I had already done some work on um, over here. So let me copy this. There we go. Awesome. And uh, let me separate that just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to fix that formatting here. I need to relabel it. This is actually my order details if I can spell it correctly. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and so here's my chart. So again, I'm going to go ahead and preview this guy and see what that looks like. And so it generated. Here's each of my office locations. Um, and if you recall, I mentioned that it's I added this office wording in here because the office page value is actually just a number. Um, you may have an office name, so you may not have to do this, but in my case, it generated a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I just wanted to label it Office 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, but then I've got my order details all the way at the bottom, uh, and it appears to be truncating some of that, so I, I probably want to change some of this uh, around. And maybe I want to utilize, instead of just an image, I'm actually going to add the, the table that represents that, because here you have some additional uh, functions, like I want to show the total values. Um, I want to show a custom range, just the, maybe the top 10 rows. And so I'm actually going to replace this guy Instead of just an image, I'm going to actually use the table uh, that I've generated using these uh, additional conditions. So let me preview it one more time, and I think this one will be a little bit better. Okay, what does this guy look like? Summary, each of my offices, beautiful, and order details. Awesome. So now it's actually, instead of an image, it's actual content within my uh, application. So you can modify this if you have people in here that are really good at let's just say pivot tables, or um, they, they want to uh, perform some of their own calculations in here, uh, et cetera. It's actually part of this now. Uh, and you can see it's quite a long list. This is all of my orders. There we go. So that's a, a simple, I think one of the simpler file formats that you can uh, utilize. And you saw, I think I built it probably in about five, maybe ten minutes. Um, this is a, a pretty polished, pretty clean looking report, um, and you just may want to introduce some additional uh, formatting and, and um, again, include some of your branding, that kind of thing. Uh, but if I go back to my Excel report, I didn't spend much more time on it. You can see I just added some backgrounds, and uh, I think I made it look uh, relatively clean. Um, and I included, this is very similar to my office locations, similar breakdowns, but uh, this didn't take very long to generate. Uh, and then I should point out that the 
PDF that I had created for my executive actually started off as an Excel file, um, and I just specified that I wanted to create it as a, a PDF. So if I go and look at that, here's my executive report. Now let's go and edit that guy to see what it looks like. Here it is, right? Uh, so here it was a, a sales, total sales, but then a breakdown of uh, each office location. Um, and actually, uh, if I preview it as PDF, this is exactly what we did to uh, generate that executive report. So you can see here's my PDF, page one, all the way down. So the flexibility that you have here is, is really, really incredible. And so the, the scenarios that we talked about, all of this stuff is being based off of um, one data set. We've got a common data set. Uh, my sales, I'll call it sales application, but it has so many bits of detail in there, like um, the total sales. I've got breakdowns by, by product categories and product names. Uh, it could be by sales individuals or their office location. Um, so many other ways, territories, regional-based. It could be customer or the suppliers providing all of these products to you. Um, all of that stuff is really actually in my uh, application, uh, which I hadn't really gone through. Right? I've got supplier, customer information, countries, all of these bits of information are at your fingertips. Um, and as I create multiple different versions of it, depending on the, the personalized view that you need and formats, um, I'm kind of using all of this, uh, or rather using the one application in this broader environment. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the, the demonstration portion of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, bounce back into our presentation briefly before we get back into questions. So. Let me go ahead and pull that back up for us. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to have Carly jump back in really briefly and talk a little bit about end printing licensing, licensing uh, before we get back into the, the Q&A section. Thanks, Eric. So when it comes to licensing for end printing, it is very simple. Um, there are two components, essentially, um, that you purchase when it comes to end printing. There's the server component, then, and there's also a client license. So that client license will be assigned to um, someone in your organization that's actually going to be building these reports. And you can, of course, you know, purchase multiple licenses if you have multiple people within your organization that would want to create these reports. And then the server component pushes it out and, and distributes those reports. So um, we have options for the report distributor, that portion of the server component, and then there's also an on-demand server portion as well. For the on-demand, those capabilities, that would actually allow an end user to be able to go in, view a ClickView application through the end printing console and, um, or through the, the hub or the information center and be able to create their own reports um, without having to go to the person that, that has the client license and request a report to be built for them. And then in terms of special pricing, we do have you know, specific incentives and promotions based on end printing. Um, I would suggest you reach out to your Click account manager to discuss those promotions with them directly um, to see what one would fit your needs and your situation. So for questions, Eric, back to you. Okay, excellent. So um, I saw a couple questions coming in here, and everyone, please feel free to keep keep typing them in. We're here for the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, and we're more than happy to answer questions. We're just barely scratching the surface of, of what this product is capable of. Um, the, uh, the guide that uh, Awesome and myself used to um, uh, kind of go through all of the capabilities was around 700 pages long. So there's, um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, and as I mentioned, we're, we're just barely showing you what it's, what it's capable of. You can introduce additional data governance, which is extremely important, and security, um, and all of these other components that really tie into it. So to get to the Q&A, uh, there's a question very much related to uh, what Carly had just mentioned, and I'll, I'll um, read it off and let Awesome kind of answer. But the question is, can all report tasks run on a central server and have in-printing clients develop locally and remotely to connect to the server, which then schedules, executes 
those tasks um, and how does licensing for that work. So that's very much tied in. All right, excellent. Uh, that's, that is a great question. Uh, so kind of explaining how this all works, right? So end printing comes with two softwares. One is a client software and one is a server software. So all the development that you just saw Eric do, uh, that happens on a local client machine, so a Windows machine. So you're designing everything, you're, you're uh, importing your recipients, you're, you're designing your reports, you're creating the tasks and schedules and so on and so forth. Now, once you're done with all those uh, tasks, uh, what happens is you have to deploy that to uh, something called the end printing server. And what that is is really you take that file, you save the, the, the end printing file, you actually save it on a server, and the server basically what it does is, is it manages that uh, all the sources, recipients, reports that you created, and, and runs it on an on a enterprise uh, environment, so your server environment pretty much. So there, there are two software bundles, the client one where you use to create your reports uh, and do all the uh, tasks that Eric just showed, and then you deploy it on the server, which sends uh, or, or runs everything that you just created. So, so, so pretty much what you just asked uh, is, is possible. Perfect, thanks. And um, next question is, was there a difference between a click view data source and the end printing data source or connection? Okay, that's an interesting question. Now, uh, if I'm understanding it right, is there a difference between end printing data source and click view data source? So uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, I don't think there's a difference. Basically, end printing is an add-on to click view. So every time you build a report in end printing, it connects to click view. So you sort of need both, right? So you can't have one or the other. So, so the, the starting point, like Eric mentioned, is your click view document. Uh, and you're using uh, end printing as an add-on to that. And, and, and the documents are separate. You have your click view document that runs independently. Then you create your uh, end printing uh, files that are independent, but it needs that source uh, QVW file to, to run all those reports. I hope I answered that question if I'm understanding yeah. it correctly. Yeah, the only thing that I would add to that is um, I, I think that the, in my mind the difference is with click view, you're connecting to one to many of your different data sources, whether it's a, a data warehouse or a data or flat files or whatever to pull it into the click environment and printing really kind of sits on top of that to pull in that that same information but so things like single source of truth and all of those things that are really great in click view uh, and printing really just uh, uh, bounces off of that or use, utilizes that information uh, next question can you link different QVWs and put them in one end printing report yeah yeah absolutely uh, uh, so this is one of the core strengths here uh, so uh, in terms of sources, uh, you, you saw Eric show you the source screen. So once you load in all your sources, which is pretty much your QVW or a click view document files, there is a section within end printing that you can link individual fields within multiple QVW or click view files. And once you do that, you can start building one report that has data from different QVW files. So it's very, very powerful, kind of breaking the silos further down. So if you have a sales, uh, sales app and then you have a, a marketing app and, and you, know, you want to see a unified view, uh, you can link the fields within them and then end, and within end printing create a unified report. So yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, next question is, uh, is the process for creating Excel or PDF reports similar to the process for creating PowerPoint presentations? Okay. So uh, the first thing I want to mention here is, whether you're creating a PowerPoint, Excel, or Word file, uh, you can export in those formats, but you can also export in PDF as well, right? So, so you can use that as a source to start designing your things uh, and export as PDF. Now, there is another uh, design, uh, uh, design function within end printing. It's called Pixel Perfect, and that actually gives you an ability to have to have pixel perfect control over what you want in your reports and it's called Pixel Perfect. It's not entirely different, but really giving you a lot more flexibility in your creation. So you don't have a, a Word format, a Excel format, or PD, or PowerPoint format to, to kind of follow. It's really a blank slate, and you can design uh, to your heart's content. Yeah, completely agree. And, and my take on this is any – I think there's so many people that are familiar with the Microsoft Office suite, right, that you've got – 
Excel, Word, PowerPoint, exact same interface, right? When, when I showed you uh, pulling in objects from your ClickView, one or many ClickView applications that you may or may not have linked together, um, it, it's, you're essentially pulling in an item. You drag it onto the screen, and then each of those individual tool sets uh, have their specific formatting requirements, right? So uh, I, I, when I created that PowerPoint presentation, it has you know, sort of that snap in place and layout formatting and, and different slide designs. Um, all of that stuff is, is native to those applications. We're not recreating that. We're actually literally using Excel or PowerPoint, but the interface and end printing is exactly the same across all of those uh, with drag and drop capabilities and then certainly generating them in different formats it's simply a, a selection if you will um, uh, next question is a really great one and I'm glad somebody asked this um, if you already have PDF distributor for click view does in printing replace this or is it an upgrade and I'd like to go ahead and take this question um, so in my mind, I, I refer to PDF Distributor as a content management tool. Uh, and printing is really your reporting tool. So uh, the difference in my mind is end printing will generate all of these different report templates or report formats. If you need a, a pixel perfect, if you need a PowerPoint, if you need an Excel file or PDF, uh, end printing kind of runs on its own. It, it piggybacks off of what you've created, the work that you have done in ClickView, uh, but you're going to schedule tasks, whether it's on an event or a uh, timed basis. Um, you're going to uh, create and distribute all of these reports. Now, when I say content management in, in the um, uh, publisher world, at least, um, uh, content management is more like uh, you have uh, different servers or different environments that are running ClickView, um, and you utilize uh, this tool to help distribute your ClickView applications to one or many of them, control security, uh, really manage that content. Now, your question is specifically around PDF distributor. Uh, PDF distributor is more like a reporting tool, um, and uh, in this case, um, uh, you certainly could utilize end printing uh, as that same uh, tool because it takes it a step further. And just rather than just creating PDFs, you can create all of these other file formats. So there's kind of three things that I touched on. Publisher is really the the content or data management tool on the ClickView side. End printing and PDF distributor are the reporting tools. And I think end printing kind of uh, takes it to the next level. Now there's some exciting stuff happening uh, around end printing that I think will it will make sense at some point to migrate uh, onto um, if, if desired. So if you have additional questions on uh, PDF distributor and, and what you can do with end printing, uh, you might want to follow up with your uh, account, account reps as well. Uh, Next question, is there a limit for the quantity of reports that we can send via email? Awesome, if you want to take that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there isn't a, a limit that we are aware of, uh, so, so I'm going to say no. Uh, uh, again, there might be some limitations based on your hardware. Uh, say if your hardware cannot support some of the processing that happens, of course, there's, there's those limitations. But in terms of licensing and, and, and producing and generating reports, we're not aware of any restrictions at this point. Okay, next question, also a really, really good one. Um, do end printing client users or those developers have to also be ClickView users with a CAL? Uh, that's a great, great question, right? So, so if you think about what we just went through, right, um, again, when you're starting to develop uh, reports and end printing, you, you are starting to access uh, the, your click view documents. So yes, uh, I'd a the answer to that is yes. Now there are specific instances where you might have QVWs uh, in your local machine, uh, uh, again, with a full uh, click view desktop license. Uh, so you, you still need that license to open all the QVWs. So, so the short answer is yes, uh, you are accessing click view documents through end printing and you would need those licenses. So um, that's certainly one scenario, the one that we had gone through where you actually link directly back to that ClickView document. Uh, if you have, I think this is a pretty common use case actually where you are not really going into the ClickView application itself. If you're simply distributing those reports, you actually don't have to have a, a ClickView license because you're not accessing ClickView. You're just getting a report sent to you. So 
I would say yes and no, depending on what your use case is. Um, I think a very common one is going to be uh, people that, uh, that don't necessarily want to open ClickView at all. You don't actually need a Cal for that. Um, the, the licensing is around end printing developers. The rest of them doesn't matter. That's a great point, Eric. Uh, just, to, just to kind of build on that, right? Uh, the people who are going to be receiving these reports via email or printer or, or whatever or not, because they're not accessing ClickView, uh, they would not need a ClickView license, right? So uh, at, at whatever point you're making some contact with ClickView, that's where you need a license. So, so people who are receiving just these static reports will not need it. So, so great point, Eric. Cool. Um, the question is, uh, report distributor license is the same as a developer license. Now I'm assuming we're talking about the end printing licensing model. Um, as Carly had mentioned, there are two components to it, the server component and the developer component. You are licensed per developer, uh, but I think this, I think what you're referring to as report distributor is that server component. Um, depending on how many of those servers you need, you could certainly ramp up multiple of those servers to distribute all of the content. Um, you, you could have multiple licenses, but I think they are separate licenses, a server license, and one to many developer licenses. Uh, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, is there, the next question is, is there any interactivity uh, possible on the end printing report? So I think we, we kind of demonstrated some of that. Um, depend on what interactivity you mean, like filtering the data. Um, no, I would actually refer somebody back to the ClickView environment because that's where it's really inter interactive. That data discovery process that people like to go through in ClickView, that's what ClickView is meant for. Uh, this is really to distribute content or distribute reports uh, and, uh, and information out to the organization. But if they need additional discovery or additional, um, have additional questions, that's really the powerful thing about ClickView. A uh, question came up, and uh, quite honestly, I'm not sure what the answer is, but maybe awesome you know. Can you publish files to Google Drive? I know you can publish files out to folders like file, like, a, like an internal file share NAS system, but I'm not entirely sure about a web share. I, I, maybe my thought on that is I know if you have like a local, like I have Dropbox and Google Drive actually, my local folder will automatically sync out to the server um, if I drop the file there, but I, I'm not entirely sure if you can send it directly out to the server. That would be my response. I don't yeah, know if that is a great question. Yeah, uh, uh, we haven't come across that uh, specifically, but yeah, uh, uh, Eric is uh, hitting the nail right on the head. Uh, again, if you have a Google Drive uh, add-on to your desktop, uh, uh, and you just can push it out to that, and it'll synchronize by itself. Uh, but specifically, if you're looking to upload to Google Drive, we can certainly look into it for you individually. Awesome. Uh, next, uh, next question is, is it possible to encrypt the report and email? Uh, there is a great question. Uh, I believe there is some sort of encryption uh, within the reporting. Yes. Uh, now, if you're looking for specific encryptions, uh, we'd have to sort of look into what kind of encryption, uh, encryption it is that you're looking at. The, uh, yeah, this is Eric again. So I, I uh, haven't actually played around with it myself, but I know that there is um, configuration possibilities for like PGP encryption, which is extremely uh, powerful encryption. Um, so my answer to this would certainly be yes. And as one of the things that I pointed out, I kind of skimmed over it, but um, very simply, you could zip up the information uh, and you can apply a password to it. So not, not exactly encrypted, but it is uh, a little bit more difficult to get at. But if you want more um, advanced security around it, uh, there is a section on PGP encryption, but I haven't uh, tried it myself. Uh, cool. Uh, let's see. So here's another question. Do end printing recipients need to have a click license in order to receive the reports? Uh, and we kind of answered that. Um, uh, the licensing for end printing is really the server component and developer component. For anybody receiving the reports, unless you have a link back to the ClickView application, no, you certainly don't have to be licensed uh, for it. Um, question around end printing. Um, let's see. Users that will receive the email will need uh, will they need licenses in ClickView? Again, same answer. 
Uh, next question is, when will nPrinting be available for ClickSense? Um, at this point, it was developed as a Click View tool set. It sits on top of Click View. Uh, it is in our roadmap to, uh, to include it in ClickSense. And as I mentioned before, I've heard some pretty exciting things about what they plan to do with it. Um, we don't have exact release dates yet, so unfortunately I can't give you uh, an exact date, but it's certainly um, something that we plan on, and I believe the rough time frame is um, middle to end of this year that we're planning on uh, something for ClickSense. So I don't know exactly what that means or what the exact time frame is, but that's my understanding of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next question is, can we send many files in one single email? Uh, here again, I believe uh, in the in the demo that we had done, I actually included for the manager multiple different attachments. And actually, there's three of them, if you think about it, three different reports. So the first report is really that the body of that email, I developed that as a, I used a web template, if you will, um, to, to generate the content within it. Uh, and I just embedded that in the email. The second report was really the Excel file, which had all of my sales order details. And then the third item was that PowerPoint presentation. So yeah, that one actually had many uh, items attached to it. Okay, uh, I'm not seeing too many additional questions popping in. Um, myself, Awesome, and Carly will stick around for uh, maybe another couple minutes. If you guys have any additional questions, please go ahead and type them in now. And again, please do follow up with your um, account rep. They would be more than happy to get Awesome or myself uh, back on the phone with you if you have more guided questions or maybe how it fits within your environment and uh, some ideas around that. We'd be happy to do that. So um, any other questions, please type them in. You can certainly start to drop off if you'd like. Um, we do have a recording for this. Um, I have been recording the whole time, so I will send that out to everyone, and you can review it at your pleasure. Uh, Next question that came in was, uh, can we launch a report from a ClickView application? Great question. Thank you so much for ask, asking that. Um, there's an on-demand component that uh, we failed to call out. On-demand is embedded directly in any ClickView application. Um, you can specify what report you want to run, what format you want it sent out in, where it's going to go, click a button, and off it goes. So yes, 100%, you can launch um, many different reports from a ClickView application, and the user has the power to specify exactly what they want that to look like. Great question. Thank you. Okay, looks like people are starting to drop off. I don't see any additional questions coming in. For those still online, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate your time, and hopefully this was um, uh, helpful, at least gives you uh, an introduction to nPrinting. Again, please follow up with us if you have additional questions. Thanks so much for joining. Have a great day. Thank you.